The Colorado one reporter JC Marmaduke joins us now. So JC, as journalists, we are presented with incredible claims all the time and we decide that they are incredible, that they are not credible, they're not believable. This seems too unbelievable to be true. What led you to follow the tip? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think that I wouldn't have believed this if it had just been a random call I got about Lydia Lerma traveling to Mexico. But I had a relationship with her beforehand where um, she actually contacted me after my initial article about Vanderwall's arrest. And she had found the, the box, the boxes that are referenced in my article. These are and the boxes that, that uh, have mentions of other young boys. And she comes to the conclusion that the, the suspect in her son's case, Andrew Vanderwall, may have molested these other boys. And off right. she goes. Right. She found, she found this stuff in his old room and she was horrified. And she called anyone she could and really wasn't getting a lot of response. And I think I was the only reporter who really gave her the time of day because it struck a chord with me. And I imagine what if that were me there in a room discovering these things. Um, and so I kept in contact with her and was planning some kind of article when I realized that he was believed to be on the run in Mexico and uh, kept in touch with her. And then she ended up texting me one day and saying that he'd been arrested. So at that point, I was like, I need proof <laughs> that, uh, that this trip happened because it does sound too, too much like a movie to believe. And, um, but I did go through the, the proof of the trip pretty meticulously with her to make sure that it happened. And then it was something that I had to write a story about. The lead of your article is one of the best leads that I've read in local journalism in a long time, and I want to read it to people here. Your first line and then a line that follows shortly after. This is the moment when the mother from Fort Collins sees her son's alleged abuser down in Mexico. Crouched on the floorboards of a rental car in a supermarket parking lot, Lydia Lerma spotted her prey and started to cry. Lerma longed to kill him. She told you that? Yes. This is a woman who was willing to take justice into her own hands to an extent. And throughout the entire piece, you're wondering how far is she willing to go? How far is she willing to go? How far do you think she was willing to go? I think she's the only one who can truly answer that question. I think that th the reason the story connected with a lot of people was because I think a lot of parents can look at that and say, I would be willing to go that far for my kid. And I think Lydia did tell me through interviews repeatedly that she would be willing to and plan to come back um, if he wasn't arrested by March 1st and bring him back to the border herself. And she... She was willing to go back and basically kidnap him and bring him back to the States if that's what it took. That's, that's what she said. And, that's, and she, she said that she had figured out what, what the route would be and how she could avoid military checkpoints. Um, but I think the important thing to, to remember is that you know this is this is what she was thinking about doing and may, maybe she would have done it but she but she was law abiding um, she was and I, and I think that she her, her her plans here and what she wanted to do were just something that that so many people could imagine doing for their own children if they had been hurt and the, the person accused of hurting them was nowhere to be found you write that law enforcement warned her off of this trip to Mexico, but as far as you see, she didn't break any laws. She just went on and beyond what law enforcement thought was wise. Right. And I think, I mean, as amazing as the Mexico trip is, I think the really important thing that maybe that, that I want people to appreciate in the story is that the way she was able to sort of help orchestrate his arrest was because she kept on it so persistently and she was she was sharing videos she was putting a face to the issue she was repeatedly she's saying you know today's his birthday um, he still hasn't been brought back to the US uh, she uh, offering prizes for people who would share the content and that's how she ended up figuring out what his location was that's how she got the tip that he was in Mexico because right. she just unrelentingly was posting about this on social media and keeping her cause alive. Right, and reminding media because I don't, I mean, part of why I was interested is because I did keep hearing from her and, and I could hear how much this had personally affected her. And I think that's, that her, her persistence is what paid off as, as amazing and as important, I think, as the Mexico trip was. She was repeatedly frustrated by law enforcement that she didn't feel was being proactive enough. Mm -hmm. Did any of the investigators acknowledge that to you, that they feel like they should have done more? 
I have not heard that from them at this point. Um, I, I was hoping to have a pretty frank discussion with the FBI about that, um, but they declined our interview requests. Um, actually, the day the story ran was when we finally heard back from them. Um, and I'm hoping to have a conversation with Fort Collins police about the, the allegations that they told Lydia that they didn't want to go fishing for other victims in the case, because um, I'm, I'm curious about what the implications are for that and how they conduct their business. Um, and then the district attorney's office has not wanted to discuss the case with me, but that door is totally open if they change their mind. What is the status of the case right now? Um, right now, he's, uh, he's back in the Larimer County Jail and hasn't entered a plea yet. So there's, there's a lot of stuff going on with, with a, a ton of discovery and evidence in the case. Um, and at some point, I imagine, I, I think he's scheduled for one in May, we'll have a, a disposition hearing and the judge will decide whether there's um, enough evidence to prosecute the case. And at some point, he'll submit a, a plea of guilty or not guilty. One thing I wondered about when I read your article is whether Andrew Vanderwall, the suspect, knew he was being hunted by the mother of one of his alleged right. victims. Do we know if he knew he was being hunted? I don't know. I'd love to know the answer to that. <laughs> and I think uh, she was pretty active on social media, so if he was and it's if he was watching that, I wonder if he knew. Um, I know she didn't make any postings about her trip or anything. Um, I think I'm not sure if she has even at this point. Um, so, so he, I don't think he was aware that he was being watched in that parking lot mm -hmm. um, and when those pictures were being taken of him. Lydia was active on social media for a whole host of causes that you outline in your article. And sometimes those folks were derided as keyboard warriors, you know, a lot, a lot of talk and a lot of courage behind the keyboard. She stepped out and really put herself forward in a dangerous situation. What is it about her, do you think, that makes her different than so many other people who just talk. Yeah, I mean, I think she was willing to take action on what she was posting about. It was, and is, in like I said, the social media aspect was really important here, and it does speak to the power of even someone who might be labeled just a keyboard warrior. But she also was repeatedly getting in contact with the police and the DA's office and the FBI and and with me and trying to make sure that people were being held accountable to doing their jobs. And I think uh, I, I think her persistence there r really paid off and her efforts to figure out if there was more in the case that hadn't been uncovered yet. She wanted to make sure that it came to light. Last question, what's the response been like since the article was first published? <laughs> the response has been pretty incredible. There's um, The story got picked up all around the country and I think in Mexico as well. Um, the Daily Mail plagiarized it. Uh, a badge of honor course, right there. I when guess. the Daily Mail steals your stuff, that's a badge of honor. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, hoping <laughs> that we can deal with that. Um, and uh, yeah, I got an email about the film and book rights for the article, uh, people reaching out to try to make donations to Lydia, and it hasn't run in print yet, so I assume we'll get another round of that um, when it does run in our print edition. Well, it is an exceptional article. I recommend that everybody read it if you can. We have a link on the next Facebook page. The Coloradoans, J.C. Marmaduke, thank you for being here. Thank you.